Hello YouTube, uh, my name is Joey. Welcome to my channel, Daily Vinyl. Um, if you are tuning into this video, you've either probably just experienced a package showing up in the mail that you are concerned about and have questions of whether or not this is normal, or you're getting ready to perhaps ship something to a friend as a gift, or you're just getting into, I guess, the world of vinyl reselling, and you have some questions. Um, and if you would have asked me three, four, maybe even five years ago, um, is shipping a vinyl record common sense? What are some things that I should or shouldn't do? I would have said, uh, obviously, it's fragile, treat it this way, um, you know. It is common sense. However, um, through the years, I, I have seen some, some faux pas, if you will, and I, I have uh, experienced some things enough well to say I have some best practices that I would like to share you. So let's jump right into a couple of things. First off, um, my experience. I, I've collected records for almost 20 years, and, and I've been selling online for the better part of a decade. So if you're going, why does this guy have any sort of authority on it? Well, well, I, I, I've shipped a lot, thousands of records. So, so please put that to the, the backbone there. Um, and if you're wondering, well, how expensive is it going to be to ship records? They can be heavy. Um, actually, the United States Postal Service has a really nice system in place called Media Mail. Um, this is for shipping things like books and CDs, cassettes, and of course, vinyl records, um, and it's very inexpensive. Uh, there are some ins and outs with Media Mail. Media Mail it has the tendency to be opened by the Postal Service if for any reason they believe that it is not uh, media. Uh, and while on occasion, if somebody buys more than $20 worth of merchandise from me, I will stick a couple of stickers or a button or something in there. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I have uh, heard horror stories of people trying to get shirts with records and paying for only media mail shipping and um, bands doing these bundles that they do nowadays. And well, uh, it, it doesn't get to the person. It gets sent back. So, so just be precautious. Um, Media Mail also does not come with insurance, um, and it is not very speedy. Uh, so while it is on the cheap side, and it makes buying records online very practical for the, the purchaser, as well as us as sellers, um, it, it doesn't come to us, uh, say, as fast as, as our Amazon Prime accounts are going to a, or get them to us. Uh, you, you might find it taking seven to nine business days, so as many as two weeks to get to you from the point of shipping. Um, as well, uh, it, it's not insured. So when you're buying very, very expensive records, um, you know, those rare pieces that you get fortunate to find here and there, I do encourage you to pay the extra. Get a uh, priority shipment, which would come with at least $50 of insurance, and it goes up from there. Uh, if you're buying a very, very expensive record, which I have been known to do, uh, insure it. You know, make sure that your butt is covered. Okay, so why am I making this video? Well, because like I said, there are some obvious uh, un misunderstood things about what happens. And uh, for more matters than I'm willing to get into, this is a record I just got today. And if you can see here, it's tearing on the sides and it's more or less packed in paper and the record itself is coming out right here. Um, that is bogus. This is how not to ship a record. Um, do not put your record in paper and ship it. Um, this is packing paper. Um, very familiar probably to you, otherwise known as uh, boring Christmas wrap. Um, but that doesn't constitute. Um, other things you don't want to ship a record in are pizza boxes, okay? Another good example of how not to ship a record is to just get any old leftover prime box and start throwing stuff in it. While these kind of air packs are really good for keeping things protected inside, a loose record in here is not going to fare well in transport. Um, and I've had that happen on more than one occasion where Amazon sends me a record and it's a box like this and I open it up and it's just loose inside. That's not going to be okay for anybody. Um, now, on the other side of it, what you should do is invest in some mailers that look like this. You can get about 25 of them online from various sources, um, and you fold them, you break them down, and then they end up looking something like this. You reinforce with tape if you're smart, and then you can usually get two records in here. Um, that being said, if you don't have two records to ship, you're only shipping one, I highly encourage you to put 
extra cardboard in there. What this suddenly becomes very, very appropriate for. Save this and cut it into little squares. You can just take the sides off and use it as wadding. Um, putting that on either side of the record is very helpful for making sure there's no gaps in the box. Um, the less room the record has to wiggle around, the more likely it is gonna make it to its destination secure. Um, a couple of things with that though, and I have this record right here, uh, Blood Brothers record. When we ship, sometimes it is appropriate to take the record out remove it from its inner sleeve and place it back in this sleeve. The reason for this, the logic being that the record itself will shake around inside the actual LP cover, uh, regardless of if it's a gatefold or a singular cover, um, and actually damage the exterior of the original case. Meaning the sides here are gonna be ripped out and you're gonna have some issues with the longevity of the actual case. Um, I actually just got Bradley's Barn by the Bow Rimmels. Um, it was brand new, music on vinyl, record store re-release. Um, somebody shipped it to me sealed, and I didn't want them to open it, but uh, sure as enough, uh, right up here on the top, there's a big crack in the seam of the uh, LP cover because it wasn't opened. So if you get a record that happens to show up to you like this, um, don't be surprised. Uh, the other thing with that is if you, you are shipping, you might want to, to ask the uh, receiving party if they want the record pulled out like this. I've been on both sides of it, uh, where people don't want it shipped this way because they believe it's more fragile, or people prefer it this way. Um, the only time that that's been problematic is I've had brand new records and I've had people request that I take them out and put them this way, um, and then they tell me that they, they expect the record to show up in near or perfectly mint condition. Um, and I bring this up as a very important topic because some modern pressing plants are, are releasing um, new LPs where the actual sheen on the lacquer, uh, it looks like it's been played. Or in some cases, like there's a, a finger touching or even just particles. And when you take a record that was otherwise sealed and open it and you put it in a case like this and you send it to somebody who's expecting a brand new, untouched, unplayed record, um, if there was any sort of factory issue, uh, that suddenly starts to appear as otherwise. Maybe this record wasn't as new as the seller said it was. So, so watch for gray areas there. Uh, a couple of things. I would highly, highly advise when it comes to shipping that... Um, you, you get some bubble tape like this, okay? Put that in and around records, especially more expensive ones. This will help. Obviously, they use this in all types of packing. That should be common sense. If you don't wanna get this, there's another thing. Um, and here's a tiny little cut piece. This is called packing foam. Um, it comes in big sheets like this. It's super cheap. Um, you can even get it in pre-cut 12 by 12, same size as a record sheets, uh, like a hundred of them for 10 bucks. Um, but I just cut little corners like this and I'll actually put it on all four sides of a record. And then often I will put something like this on the other side of it. And then I wedge that with the cardboard and the mailer and it all holds together just fine. You don't have to put any extra tape, worry about any extra weight. It's not going anywhere once it's in there. Um, so a couple of other questions you might have. Well, what about priority mailers like this? I can get them for free at the post office. Um, sure, you can. Um, and I advise you do. If you ship cassettes or something, these are great. They hold together. They have sealers inside. They make them hold. Uh, you don't have to use any extra glue or tape. What I do recommend though, is if you don't wanna pay that priority mail cost, Cover it in this, and you can ship it media mail. They probably don't appreciate that, but you know, man's gotta make his money, okay? Um, what I wouldn't substitute for this foam stuff is something like this, your average packing paper. Um, this is gonna be okay if you have a couple of records and you wanna put it in between them to like not have them rub up against, or if you wanna tape like some actual newspaper that you have around the exterior of a record that's been packed in a sleeve. But I wouldn't use this as a substitute for actual bubble paper or foam paper. It's just not gonna do the same thing. Also, just for my own personal taste, this is very, 
it's not rigid enough. It's very loose. So the longer you're putting it into something, it starts to fold up and it gets bunchy and it's just not very smooth. And, and I'm a little compulsive, so I don't like that. Um, anyhow, uh, a couple of other things. Uh, I've seen a lot of this kind of fragile tape that goes around. You can even buy fragile stickers. That's excellent. That's a good way to um, at least trigger to the uh, mail carrier that this is a vinyl record or something that could break. Um, the shape obviously lends itself to being a cheap Christmas calendar or something, but fragile definitely sets it aside. You can get rolls of those fragile stickers on um, just about any packing website for, for next to nothing. Um, if you don't have any, simply using a big red marker or pen is helpful too, okay? Get creative. Uh, a couple of things. Don't ship in this, okay? Just like wrapping in per, uh, brown paper, getting these priority envelopes or any manila envelope um, is a poor choice as well. Um, so I, I really want to stress that something I do is I Lysol and hand sanitize periodically with mail. Um, right now is coronavirus. Uh, I was doing the hand sanitizer before anyhow, um, just because records need to be clean. Um, Lysol is also helpful, and I think it's a good practice to have that I'm going to uh, impart onto my regular, you know, mail habits even after this ends. So what I have is a little table set up uh, near the entry of my home and when new mail comes in, I just give it a, a quick little pss, pss, you know, and, and I let it sit there for an hour or two before I mess with it. Uh, couple of last minute things and we'll recap and I'll say goodbye. Uh, invest in a quality scale. Okay, um, this one I actually got at all places at JCPenney. Um, it was from the home department in the kitchen section. Uh, it, it's a nice scale. It does everything I need it to. Um, it weighs all the way up to, I believe, 30 pounds, which would be like the heaviest thing I've ever shipped. Um, it takes little watch batteries, easy to change out. I think I paid $10 for this. Um, you can get these at any cooking supply or on Amazon. What I wouldn't get is one of those smaller scales, um, often seen for weighing things that, well, probably shouldn't be sold if you catch my drift. Um, they're just not big enough for packing. Uh, you could use a household scale, the kind that I would weigh myself with, which I don't ever do because I hate to fe feel fat. <laughs> um, but if you found one like that, problematic is a lot of smaller weights aren't gonna show up. Um, and most record packages are gonna be between one and two pounds. Um, I don't ship a lot of large scale packages. 90% of the orders that I take and I send are going to be one to two records. Uh, out of a thousand orders, I would say 950 of them were one to two records. So don't worry about it, but they do make bigger, better boxes. Okay. So if you get somebody who wants a couple of box sets or is ordering 10 records, they do make these kind of mailers. Just to be on the up and up and to be environmentally conscious, I order just about as many records as I ship um, and just save them. Okay, I mean, uh, give give Earth a chance. Keep old mailers, reuse them. Uh, there's no problem with reusing them unless the structural integrity has been compromised in some way. So, so save your old mailers, keep them in a stack. Um, they're free. Uh, and a lot of times all the extra supplies that I've gone over here are, are included because other um, considerate uh, vinyl sellers are gonna do the same thing that I'm, I'm suggesting here. Overall, make sure you're using a quality mailer. Okay, um, second, Put in your inserts, okay? Some cool things like Third Man Records out of Nashville, Jack White, they'll even have custom ones, okay? If you wanna go that far, if you're sending that much stuff, maybe you wanna brand it, um, you can. What I've taken the liberty of doing is I had a stamp made with my logo, and I just put that on things. Sometimes I put it on the insert inside, sometimes I put it on the outside of the box. Uh, goes a long way, okay? A little bit of branding, and I, and I don't think it hurts on the side of, well, the uh, postal service sees my logo and it immediately triggers a uh, conscious going, oh, there's a record in there. Okay, it helps like the fragile sticker. It also avoids the unnecessary opening of my media mail just to check that it is in fact a record. So make sure you have a quality mailer, solid mailer. Make sure you're wedging it in there so there's no extra space, but not so much that it's gonna crack. Um, use quality foam paper, bubble tape, packing tape, don't use scotch tape, don't use masking tape, and don't use duct tape. It's heavy. It'll cost you more, okay? Also, um, when you drop off your mailer, take it inside. 
don't leave it in the heat, okay? If you put it in an exterior box outside, even if it's 75 degrees outside, that metal box is going to probably be well over 100 degrees warp potential for those LPs inside uh, with the heat that's going to be generated inside that metal container. So just be cognizant of all of the things that you would want um, to do to, to take care of your record when it's outside of the package, once it's in that package and it leaves your hand. Uh, the people who are buying records from you are going to appreciate it. If you're sending it as a gift, you want it to get there intact. And uh, you know, these are better practices for everybody so then that way we know uh, within the record community that we're getting quality shipments. Our records are, are, are coming to us the way we would expect them, so we should send them the same way, right? Um, I hope that kind of answers above all every sort of topic there might be uh, within the space of shipping records. If I miss something though, um, please let me know. Uh, I try to, to be as, as covering or, or overall as I could with the topic, um, but who knows? Um, if you've stayed with me the whole 15 minutes, I appreciate it. I didn't think it was going to take this long to get into it, but there was a lot of things to cover. Uh, I appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. Go ahead, subscribe, give me a like, turn the bell on, all those good things. If not, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy.